So I guess it's time to talk about H-bridges. Uh, so the idea of an H-bridge, as kind of mentioned uh, yesterday, um, is that it gives you the ability to turn a motor in two directions. Uh, so if you open up, um, say, the upper left and lower right transistors, current would flow through one way. Um, however, if you close those uh, and open up the other two, then current would flow in the opposite direction. So in this example, let's say the motor went counterclockwise on the blue line um, and clockwise on the red line. You could control your wheels to go like move your card forward um, or to move your car backwards. Um, and that's the whole idea of an H-bridge. Uh, so conceptually, pretty simple. Um, and so what you need to do is you need to have some way to actually um, build this thing. Uh, your first option is that you could build your own. Uh, there's nothing nothing wrong with building your own. Um, you could build it out of uh, NPNs um, and PNPs. Note that the ones on top would be the PNPs and the ones on the bottoms would be um, NPNs. So just to kind of fix my drawing there. Uh, you could also build it out of MOSFETs. Um, so with MOSFETs, the top two would be P-channel MOSFETs. The bottom two would be N-channel MOSFETs. The one reason that people don't build their own typically is you have to be really careful about shoot-through current um, because if you even for like a moment had like both of them on the left on, which would be bad, um, current would just go shoom um, and shoot right through there. It's called shoot-through current because um, the idea is that you wouldn't ever intentionally uh, do that, but you know sometimes it happens. Um, you would only ever turn on like these two uh, when you're going in one direction. Um, or when you're going the other way, you know, you would turn on these two. And of course, um, when when these two are on, then those two are off. Um, and likewise, whenever the blue ones are on, the red ones are off, right? Uh, so you always have uh, these pairs. So you could build your own, but, but to be honest, most people don't. Um, and we won't in this class, right? That's probably the most important thing uh, to you. We're going to use a convenient little chip. Uh, so kind of like with uh, NPNs, we used a Darlington. Uh, with the H-Bridge, we're going to use a special chip for that too. Uh, the chip is called, you'll hear me call it an L293. Uh, so if you look on these chips, it might say L293. To be honest, the 293 got deprecated. It was around for a lot of years. We might still have one in the storeroom. Uh, they got replaced by this 754410. Um, and to be honest, eventually that number is going to get replaced too. And so I may or may not re-record this video when it does, uh, but that's just kind of how things work. They get deprecated. The nice thing is, is the new one is an exact pin replacement. It just can do a little bit more current. Um, so they technically are good um, up to closer to 1 amp uh, when you're using 5 volts. To be honest, they're only good, at, they're only good up to 1 amp if you put a heat sink on them. Um, H-Bridges get hot um, and the amount of current they can deliver depends on how well you get the heat out um, so if you get the heat out really well you can use them up to an amp uh, at five volts obviously if you jump to 12 volts um, you can do like you know 0.3 amps um, but i digress we're learning how to use them so the way that you um, use them is there's a bunch of pins that you just ground um, and they're your primary way to get the heat out uh, there is one chip or one pin that you always hold at 5 volts. Uh, so 5 volts always controls the logic that's on the chip. Uh, that pin is always at 5 volts. I don't care if you're driving a 12 volt motor, an 18 volt motor, don't care. Um, in fact, it's always the regulated 5 volts. Um, so it sees the same thing that the PIC sees, right? So it gets the same information there. Um, there's another line on here, which is very different. Um, and this is whatever your, your motors need, right? Um, so let's say your motors are 12 volt motors, you'd put 12 there. If they're six volt motors, you'd put six there. Um, almost always, um, this is the unregulated uh, voltage. So it's like the raw connection to your power supply, right? Um, and that's kind of what keeps that separate from your pick. Um, so that's why there are two power supplies. Sometimes, I don't know why, I've said this many times, people think that's like, ah, this power supply is for this side, and this power supply is for this side. Uh, that's not the way it works, right? The, so, all right, enough said on that. Um, so I kind of mentioned the sides, uh, so let's talk about the sides. Uh, so there are actually two sides on here. Um, so there is an H bridge on this side, um, and then there's an H bridge on this side. 
So each chip is actually two completely independent H bridges. Uh, so the way you would connect it is you've got two places where your motor connects. I think the next slide has a more room for me to draw this, but I'll kind of start it here. Um, and then there's two places for your microcontroller to connect, right? Um, so your microcontroller would connect uh, on input one and input two. Um, if you wanted to drive in one direction, um, you would make this like a one and a zero. So like you would give it um, a high on one and then a low on the other. That would go one way. And then if you wanted to go the other direction, uh, you would instead give it um, a zero here and a one here. And that would go the other direction. Uh, so that's kind of the basics of how they work. If you wanted to not move at all, um, you just give it a zero and a zero. Or you could actually give it a one and a one. Technically, the one and the one makes it stop faster. It's called break to a stop. Um, I don't see a huge difference, but that's the idea of how the chip's supposed to work. So those control uh, how it goes. There's one more pin on the side, and that's the enable line. Um, if you want to use it, um, make sure it's connected to 5 volts. Typically, signal lines that need to be held high, you connect through a resistor. Uh, that's, that's just good practice. Um, VCC should always go straight to your power supply, um, and then all other signal lines should technically always go through a resistor. Does it work if you forget the resistor? You bet. Um, but good electrical engineering practices, signal lines go through resistors. Uh, so let's go ahead and draw it on the next page in a little bit more detail. Oh, uh, sorry, I meant to say the data sheet is up on uh, the course website. Um, very handy uh, whenever you're just trying to remember where these pins go. The data sheet's always a good place to go there. Um, it even has a little diagram of like how you make this thing go with highs and lows. Pretty simple. Uh, just to kind of draw a little bit uh, better example, um, I'll go ahead and use the other side just to prove that I can. Um, so ah, now I use this side. Um, so I've got my enable line, uh, which is I'm going to make always on. You don't have to make it always on. Actually, you could do it through a, a switch. Oops, got one ahead of myself there. Um, so if I wanted to control it, like whether it was on or off, um, I could put it um, through a switch. Let me draw that again. So I could... So here's what one of these things looks like. Uh, just to kind of draw a more complex version, um, you've got your pull-up resistor. Um, you could also connect this to a switch. Um, so let's say you have a switch here. I'll just kind of draw it this way. Um, and what that would do is that would let you leave it on. Um, it would run normally, but then if you push the button, it would like turn the thing off. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we've also got our um, protection that we've got to worry about. Uh, our protection is much harder uh, on an H-bridge. Boo. Uh, because of this, like, current could be going through this way or it could be going through this way and how it connects. Um, it's a little complicated, to be, to be perfectly honest. Um, and the way it works is that you have a diode uh, on each rail that goes to 5 volts, um, or I shouldn't say 5 volts, I should say whatever your power supply of the motor is. Um, so if the power supply of the motor is 12, you'd connect it to 12. Um, so you've got those two, which is kind of what you would expect. Um, and then there's two more, uh, which uh, are new, um, and they're needed for H bridges only. Um, and what they do is they um, <clears throat> connect to ground, um, and then they kind of point up to the control line, right? Um, and so this is the setup of the decoupling capacitors on an H-bridge. Sorry, I meant to say snubber diodes. Uh, the decoupling capacitors are quite easy. Uh, the decoupling capacitors, so this guy connects there. Uh, it's also this guy. Woo! Um, so all these are connected to like whatever is powering your motor. So if it's plus 12, it's plus 12, great. Um, somewhere you would hang on um, a 330 ohm uh, decoupling capacitor. Note that we drove the whole, um, the whole thing from one side. I mean, we grounded those guys. 
The other side, um, if you're not using it, you just ground the enable line, then you don't have to worry about it. You also ground the grounds. Uh, that's just because it helps get heat out of the chip. Um, and then this VCC pin is not really part of the other side. It's actually a general chip. So like those two are general chip pins. Um, and then this one, those are for one side, and then those are for the other side. People always think those VCCs, I guess it makes sense, are part of the side, but they're not. They're independent. Um, so let's just go ahead and make sure that you've got it. Um, so go ahead and draw me an example. Um, so uh, this is just a cleaner version, uh, so I could add the decoupling capacitors. And then the one that's on the pick, you can't, you wouldn't be able to see here, uh, but that's the decoupling capacitor you would need to add. Um, and a much cleaner um version of the diodes than the one I drew, of course. Uh, so go ahead and practice for a second. Uh, draw me uh, a little motor on the right side. So I'll go ahead and do it too, it's easy. Um, so I mean, <clears throat> most important thing, uh, just kind of start with the basics. Uh, let's pretend like it's a 12 volter. Um, so the side I'm not using, uh, I will just go ahead and ground those. Um, my VCC1 and VCC2, uh, I would connect here, so this is a regulated 5 volts. And then if I'm not using the left side, I just ground the enable pin, um, and it's off. Um, and then if it's always enabled on the other side, that means it goes through a resistor uh, to the regulated 5 volts. Uh, and then your motor goes here. Oops, <laughs> almost went to the input line. Uh, and then your microcontroller would connect to input one and input, uh, sorry, input four and input three. And then your grounds would just be grounded. Uh, so that's kind of what this thing looks like. Um, if you wanted to be really good, you could add the uh, decoupling capacitors. Uh, so I just kind of added mine on there real sloppy like. Um, but I mean, you can kind of see that there's two that go up to 12, um, and then there are also two that go um, from ground up to the uh, the motor supply line. So that's kind of what it looks like. Um, so that's it for this time. Uh, come back next time, we'll do a practice problem.